Okay, so this one here tells me to sketch the graph of 3 over x minus 2 by hand. So we're going to start with a generic. That's not first. So what's the first thing we do? We got factor. You can Look for factor form. So this is in general form. Oh, can I factor this? Nothing here will factor. So the general form and the factored form are the same. All right, see how it's right. All right, so the things that we're going to look for, are there any holes in the graph? There's not. There's nothing that cancels. Vertical asymptote? Two. No. It's negative two. No. Positive one. No. How do you find it? You set the denominator equal to zero. Well, is it not two? What? It's two. No, it's x equals two. You can't. Because it's an equation of a line. It's a vertical line. That's not what you said. X equals 2 is my vertical asymptote. An equation of a line. You can't just say 2. Thank you. Next thing I'm looking for, my horizontal asymptote. So I'm going to compare the degrees of the numerator and denominator. The numerator is 3. No. I'm sorry, the degree of the numerator is zero. Zero. There is no x raising power, that means it's zero. The degree of the denominator is one. So since the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, I have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. Okay, those are the new things that we learned. Now, more things that we're going to need for our graph. We need to know any x-intercepts. And we need to know any y-intercepts. Okay? So, how do we find x-intercepts? Well, what happens at every x-intercept? Y equals zero. Y equals zero. So, to find x-intercepts, we plug in y. zero for y. y. So, I'm going to set this equal to zero. So, that's going to tell me zero equals three over x minus two. Now I would cross multiply there. That tells me 3 equals 0, which is a lot of fun. So what are my x-intercepts? There are none. When I cross multiply, I was trying to solve for x. x went away. That means there are no x-intercepts. Okay. Next, y-intercepts. Oh, no. Yes. We're going to plug in 0 for x. So that's going to tell me y equals 3 over 0 minus 2. So, again, I should have wrote y-intercepts. y equals 3 over negative 2, which means negative 1.5 is a y-intercept. So it crosses the y-axis at negative 1.5. Okay, now the last thing we have to do, we know that our graph can never cross a vertical asymptote. But our graph can cross a horizontal asymptote. So if it crosses, we need to know where it crosses. So this is actually a special case here because what is our horizontal asymptote? Our horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. So if the graph crosses at y equals 0, then we have what? We have an x-intercept. So this time we've already found I don't have any x-intercepts. So I can know that it doesn't cross this horizontal asymptote. But I'm going to show you how we find that. So the way I ask that, I want to know does it cross the horizontal asymptote? Well. That does not even like an H at all. Does it cross the horizontal asymptote? Well, we know the horizontal asymptote is occurring when y is equal to 0, so we would plug in 0 for y. Well, again, we've already done that right here. We found the x-intercepts because this time it's the same thing. But I would say 0 equals 3 over x minus 2, and I would solve. So I'm going to get 0 equals 3 which means, no, it does not cross the horizontal asymptote.
Any questions about how I found any of this information? Okay, so when I put this all together, so here comes, here comes the big picture. I have no holes. I have a vertical asymptote at x equals 2. So I'm going to go to x equals 2, and I'm going to draw a dashed line to represent my vertical asymptote at x equals 2. Next, I have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. So I'm going to go to y equals 0, and I'm going to draw a dashed line. So that is on the x-axis. Okay. I have no x-intercepts. I have a y-intercept at negative 1.5. So I know it's going to cross the y-axis here at negative 1.5. And I know it never crosses. So I have to graph this with only this limited bit of information. So, again, what do we know happens? We know that at this vertical asymptote, the graph is going to break apart. So I know what half of my graph does right now. So really, you've got, you've got four options, right? The graph could look like this. It could look like here and here, right, where they could both be above. That's an option. It could be ones above and ones below. It could be the other way. You could have this one is below and this one is above. Or you could have them both below. Y'all kind of see what I'm talking about? The general form. I know what one half of it is because I know where my y-intercept is. If it has to cross this point and it never crosses here, I know that this part of the graph has to be right. Because it has to go through this point. So I've got the first part established. Again, as it goes to negative infinity, it's always going to get closer to this asymptote. It's the way it always works. We're tending towards the horizontal asymptote. So because I know that one part of my graph, I'm going to go ahead and fill it in here. Now, how can I find the other part? Because I have no more points over here. I don't really know where it needs to go. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to pick an x value that's over here and see what the y value is. And that can tell me, am I above the y equals zero line or am I below it? Am I above the horizontal asymptote or below it? So I'm going to plug in four. Four is over here. Could I pick three? Yes. Could I pick five? Yes, six, yes. I can pick any x value over here. I just want to know what's the y value, which side am I on. So if I plug in 4 for x, that's going to give me 3 over 4 minus 2. So that's 3 over 2, which is positive, right? It's 1.5. So I know at 4, the graph should be at 1.5. Now that's all the information I need to know where I'm at over here. I didn't know if I was above or below. Now I know. I'm above. Because it has to go through that point. It has to go through four, one and a half. Okay, so here we go. We're going to sketch the graph of f of x equals one over x plus three by hand. So we're looking for our big three things. So I'm gonna start going quicker because we got to get these done, right? If you've got a question, you've got to speak up. Um, first thing I'm looking for, this is in general form. What does the factored form look like? The same. The same. It will not factor. So I'm looking for holes. Anything that will cancel? No. So there are no holes. Next thing, vertical asymptotes. That happens when the denominator becomes zero. So x equals negative 3 is a vertical asymptote. Next thing I'm looking for, horizontal asymptote. I'm looking at the degree of the numerator and denominator. Because the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, 
have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. Those are the three things we worked on last week. Next, we're looking for the x-intercepts. X-intercepts happen when the y value is zero. Plug in zero for y. And solve. So I put it over one, cross multiply. That tells me one equals zero, which is an error, right? There is no more x. That means there are no x-intercepts. Next thing I'm looking for, y-intercept. Y-intercepts happen when the x value is zero. So I'm going to have y equals 1 over 0 plus 3. That means my y-intercept is at 1 third. So I, that means I have the point 0, 1 third on my graph. And then the last thing we need to check is does it cross the horizontal asymptote? Does it cross horizontal asymptote? The way we do that... We're, we know the horizontal asymptote happens when y is 0, so we plug in 0 for y and solve. So again, this, this is, again is a special case because my horizontal asymptote is on the x-axis. So I know there are no x-intercepts, so I know this is not going to work either. So that's going to be 0 equals 1, which again means no, it does not cross the horizontal asymptote. So those are the... One, two, three, four, five, six things that we're checking for. And we're going to build the beginning of our graph from those five things. Any questions so far about finding any of those? Is everybody good? Okay, vertical asymptote is at x equals negative 3. So I'm going to negative 3 and I'm putting a dotted line. My horizontal asymptote is at y equals 0. So I'm going to where y is 0, and I'm putting a dotted line. And I'm going to use as many points as I know to help me graph this. The only point I know is the y-intercept is 0, 1 third, which would be somewhere right in here. So again, remember yesterday we talked about this one vertical asymptote divides my graph into two sections. Now... I don't think I went over it in this class, but I did in my next class. How do I know that the graph doesn't look like this? Because it doesn't. Excuse me, teachers. Juniors and seniors that are taking the ASBOUND test this morning, you can report to the high school library at this time. Thank you. So what is it we're graphing? This is a... Like general, like we graph quadratics, we graph polynomial functions. This is what? This is a rational what? Function is what we say. What is a function? It's a special kind of relation where each input has exactly one output. Each element in the domain has exactly one element of the range. What do we know about graphs of functions? They have to pass the vertical line test. So you're never going to have an overlap like this, where I'm following the asymptote here and here. It's only going to be in one of the two places, because it is a function. So it must pass the vertical line test. So I know with you guys yesterday, I went through all of the options. Right? I talked about there were four options that you could have. We could be here and here, or we could be up top and here, or we could be at the bottom and here, or we could be at the bottom and bottom. But I didn't explain how I knew those were the four options. It's because it has to be a function. It has to pass the vertical line test. So I already know half of my graph. Which half do I know? I know what? Top right. Because I know it has to go through this y-intercept, so I know the graph has to happen up here, above. That's the only part I know so far. But I know it has to happen here. Otherwise, it can't have that <coughs> y-intercept. So we tend towards the asymptotes. We're happening in the top right. So now the question is, is the second half of my graph here or here? Well, the only way we know is to plug in an x value that's happening over here. So I could pick negative 4, negative 5, negative 6. Negative a million fifty-three, right? It doesn't matter what I pick. I just need to pick something 
on the left side of my vertical asymptote. I'm going to pick negative 5 because, I don't know, because I feel like it. Okay, so if I plug in negative 5, oh, great, I've covered up. So stupid. Okay, so my function was 1 over x plus 3. So now if I plug in negative 5, that's 1 over negative 5 plus 3. Well, negative 5 plus 3 is negative 2. So when I plugged in negative 5, I got out a value of negative 1 half or negative 0.5. That's all I need to know. Now I know if I go to negative 5, I need to be at negative a half, which means I'm going to be beneath the horizontal asymptote. So I know what the graph does now. So I plot that one point that I found, and then I just tend towards the asymptotes. Like that. Okay, look at this one. I'm going to sketch the graph of f of x equals 2x minus 1 over x by hand. My sister's van smells like... Okay, so, so, right here. I've got 2x minus 1 over x. First, I want to get the factored form. So can I factor either one of these? No. So the general form is the factored form. Second, are there any holes in the graph? No, because nothing cancels. Next, vertical asymptote. That's where the denominator becomes zero. So x equals zero is a vertical asymptote. <coughs> Next thing I want to look for, horizontal asymptote. That's where I compare the degrees. The degree of the numerator is one. The degree of the denominator is one. So they agree. So I've got y equals two over one. <coughs> as my horizontal asymptote, which we can write that as just y equals 2. <coughs> Next, x-intercepts. Where does the x-intercepts occur? When the y value is 0. So I've got 0 equals 2x minus 1 over x. I'm going to solve this. All right, This time it's going to work. 0 times x is 0. But I'm left here with 1 times 2x minus 1, which is 2x minus 1. So I'm going to solve this out. So that tells me 2x equals 1. So x equals 1 half. So that means I have an x-intercept at 1 half comma 0. Any questions there? That's the first time we've seen an x-intercept. I just want to make sure everybody's on board. See what we did. Plugged in 0 for y. I set up as a proportion and solved. The only x value was 1 half, so I have an x-intercept at 1 half. Next thing I'm looking for, the y-intercept. So y-intercept happens when x is 0. Okay, well, so what's going to happen here? 2 times 0 minus 1 over 0. Well, now I have a divide by 0 error. Right? So that means there is no y-intercept. Okay, and then this one, does it cross horizontal asymptote? Okay, so... What is my horizontal asymptote? It happens when y is equal to 2. So that means it might cross. I plug in 2 for y to find out. Well, where does the y value become 2? So I've got 2 equals 2x minus 1 over x. Now I'm going to solve this and see what happens. So I put that over 1 to have a proportion. Cross multiply. 2 times x is 2x. And then 1 times 2x minus 1 is 2x minus 1. Now I've got x's on both sides, so what do I have to do? Subtract 2x from both sides or move a 2x over, however you want to think about it. If I subtract 2x from both sides, I get 0 equals negative 1. So my x's went away. That means this is an error message. Does it make any sense? So it does not cross the horizontal asymptote. 
if it told me x equals a number, then that's telling me where it crosses. But since I didn't get that, that means it does not cross the horizontal axis. This two? Because, what am I asking? I'm asking, does it cross the horizontal asymptote? Where does the horizontal asymptote happen? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. At y equals 2. So I plug 2 in for y. And I want to know, does this ever spit out a y value of 2? So you so, always plug in the horizontal asymptote. Yes. And like I said, I told you the first two we had special examples. Because my horizontal asymptote was the x-axis, y equals 0. So if I didn't have x-intercepts, then it wasn't going to cross. You follow that or you just, just give me a thumbs up and tell me to shut up. Okay, so. I'm good. I like it. I, 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 I agree you do. Anything else about finding any of this? Now put it all on paper. To graph it. And one thing I meant to tell you guys, but I keep forgetting. I have graph paper up here in this top drawer if you need any. Okay? So I'm going to put down everything I know about this graph on paper. I know I have a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. So that means my y, asymp or I'm sorry, my y axis is the vertical asymptote. So dotted line at y equals 0, or sorry, x equals 0. Horizontal asymptote at y equals 2. That's going to be right here. So again, I'm dividing my graph into two pieces by that vertical asymptote. Right, it's in two pieces. Okay, now what other information do I know? I know that the only time it crosses the x-axis is at one-half. So I know at one-half, zero, my graph has to cross the x-axis there. I know that it doesn't have a y-intercept, and I know it doesn't cross the horizontal asymptote. Now this time, do I have enough information to graph all of it? I do. You might be looking, uh, I don't know. Y'all know the one piece we can graph, right? It's right here. You know it has to go through this x-intercept, so I know my graph is going to be happening down here. 10 towards the asymptotes, 10 towards the asymptotes. Now my second piece, does anybody know which side it goes on? Because I do. It is on the left, but is it going to be up here or down here? Up here. How do you know? I don't. You, yes, does it give you a chance? Yeah. Anybody have where it goes and how you know? And if you don't, how could you find out? You got to plug in somewhere. You can plug in. That's an option. You can plug anything over here and find out. But I can find it without plugging in. Okay, well, hold wait. No, I'll have to do You're right. You can plug in and find it. But I don't have to plug in. Well, I've done the smartest guy in the room. No, because, think about it. Where are the x-intercepts? One half. Are there any other x-intercepts? No. So if the graph happened down here, what would have to happen? It would have to have another x-intercept. It can't happen down there without another x-intercept. So it has to happen up here. <laughs> you can, so let's do it. Dang it, I've covered up my... <laughs> you can still plug in, so let me write it down here. So if I had 2x minus 1 over x. All right, I could pick any x value over here. So let's pick negative 1. Write this over here. 2 times negative 1 is 0. Negative 2. Negative 2 minus 1 is... Negative 3 over negative 1. Well, what is negative 3 divided by negative 1? 3. So when the x value is negative 1, the y value should be 3. So again, my graph is not exactly where it's supposed to be, but I'm not looking for exact points besides these. Right? These are the only ones I'll look for. But I know it's happening up here, and mine should be flatter, right? It should go through here. I did a bad job turning. But it's, it's still doing what I said it was going to do. It's above the horizontal asymptotes. 
Again, just confirming what I already need because there wasn't another example. Horizontal asymptote at y equals 2. I have an x intercept at negative 1.5, which is here, and I have a y intercept at 3, which is here. I know it doesn't cross the horizontal asymptote. I have everything I need. I don't have to plug anything in. I know exactly where all this graph happens. So the x-intercept happening means the graph here has to look like this. And then to cross that y-intercept, the graph has to look something like this. And I did a bad job. I wish I didn't make this look so much like an L. Right? It's not a 90-degree turn. It should be more gradual. I tried to correct it, but... Here's the next one. Can I factor this? The denominator, yes, I can. I can factor. So can I factor this without doing A times C? Can you all look at that and know what that factor is to be? If you can't, you can do A times C. That's fine. But I can look at that and know that that has to be X minus 2 times X plus 1. So now I have general form and factored form. Does anything cancel? from the numerator and denominator? No. So that means I have no holes. My vertical asymptotes, those are going to happen when the denominator becomes zero. So this graph, I'm going to have two vertical asymptotes. So when x minus 2 is zero, and when x plus 1 is zero. So at x equals 2, I have a vertical asymptote. At x equals negative 1, I have a vertical asymptote. Next thing I'll look for, horizontal asymptotes. So let me circle these so I don't lose them. Horizontal asymptote happens when um, I'm looking at the degrees here. The degree of the numerator is 1. The degree of the denominator is 2. That means I have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. 
x-intercepts, those happen when the y value is zero. So plug in zero for y equals x over x squared minus x minus two. I put this over one, cross multiply. That tells me x equals zero is an x-intercept. Okay, well if zero is my x-intercept, then I also know what my y-intercept is. It must also be zero. But if you didn't know that, you can still plug in, right? If I plug in zero for x, zero, 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 negative two, zero over negative two is zero. So the y-intercept is also at zero. And now does it cross the horizontal asymptote? Okay, so my horizontal asymptote happens when y is equal to zero. So I'm going to be looking at zero equals, I've already done this, haven't I? I've already solved this once before. So that's going to give me x equals zero. So this time it does cross the horizontal asymptote at zero. But again, I knew that because my horizontal asymptote was on the x-axis. And because it has an x-intercept, then it does cross this horizontal asymptote. So I'm going to have to do some investigating, but we'll look at that in just a second. So now if I had to graph this, there's really not a lot of information here. Really not a lot of information. I know I have a vertical asymptote at x equals 2. I know I have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 1. I know I have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. I know my graph has to touch right here at 0, 0. Okay? So this time I'm going to have to plug in a lot because I don't have a clue what my graph does here. I don't really know what it does here. Right? It could snake through, it could be a parabola, it could snake this way, or it could be a parabola. I really don't have any idea. I'm going to have to plug in a lot of points in this middle section to find out what's happening. And then over here, again, I can pick a point. I know what shape it's going to have over here, but I don't know where it's happening. So let's go through and start plugging in values. Please don't have tied together. Yes, thank you. Okay, so let's plug in, let's do the left side. <coughs> so I could plug in anything over here I wanted to, I'm going to plug in negative 2. Okay, so if I plug in negative 2, that's going to give me negative 2 over negative 2 squared minus negative 2 minus 2. So that is negative 2 over 4 plus 2 minus 2, which is negative 2 over 4, which is negative a half. So when I plugged in negative 2, the y value was negative a half. That's all the information I need to know. I know right here the graph's going to look something like that. I'm going to go ahead and do the right side because it's going to be just as simple. Once I know if it's on top or bottom, then I can fill in the rest around it. So I'm going to plug in 3. So that gives me 3 over 3 squared minus 3 minus 2. So that's 9 minus 5, which is 4. So when I plugged in 3, I got 3 fourths out. Which again tells me everything I need to know on the right side of my graph. going to look something like that. It has to happen on the top side. I think in the middle, very confusing. So the first thing I'm going to do, I, I'm going to plug in 1 because it's a nice whole number. It's going to be easy to plug in and I can get some idea where 1 is happening. So if I plug in 1, that's going to give me 1 over 1 squared minus 1 minus 2. So when I plug in, that's 1 over 1 minus 1 is 0, negative 2. 
So when I plug in 1, I'm getting out negative a half. Okay, so now I know what the graph's doing on this side. Because if it went down here and came back, what would have to happen? I'd have to have another x-intercept that doesn't exist. So I know right here the graph's going this way. Now, just looking at it, because it's not centered, I'm going to guess it's a snake. I'm going to guess it's above to below. But it could still be a parabola with this is the vertex. But if that's the vertex, it should be centered. So I'm going to guess it's snakes. But let's just plug in a point over here to confirm. So I'm going to plug in negative a half. Right? It's on the left side, but I'm still inside. So if I plug in negative a half, that's going to give me negative 0.5 over negative a half squared is going to be 0 0.25 minus 0 0.5 minus 2. So that is negative a half over that is negative 2.25. So It's a, it's a decimal. Who really cares what it is? I know it's positive, right? Because the negative divided by negative, that's a positive. So when I plug in negative a half, my y value is positive. It's somewhere right here. So again, that tells me everything I need to know is going to tend towards the asymptote here. So in the middle there, I'm going to have a... I'm going to have a Gary.
Okay, so this is all the information that's given to me from my critical points. So again, not enough to graph it all together, but it gives me a start. Any questions about any part of this before we start plugging in? Okay, so now we're going to just start plugging in values to find out where the graph's happening. So I'm going to start on the left side. I'm going to plug in negative 3. So that's going to give me 3 times negative 3 over negative 3 squared plus negative 3 minus 2. So that's negative 9 over 9 minus 5 is 4. So negative 9 over 4, which is negative 2.25. So when I plug in negative 3, I get negative 2.25, which is here. And again, that's enough information for me to know. <coughs> the graph's happening in that section. Then we're going to plug in 2, or anything on the right side. I chose 2 because it's the lowest number closest to it. So now I've got 3 times 2 over 2 squared plus 2 minus 2. So that's 6 over 4, which is 1.5. So when I plugged in 2, I got 1.5, which would be here. So again, that's enough information for me to know the graph's happening up here. In the middle, again, could have a parabola, could have a snake. I'm guessing it's going to be a snake again because there's only one point and it's a little off center. So let's plug in some values to see. So I'm going to plug in negative 1 first. So if I plug in negative 1, that gives me 3 times negative 1 over negative 1 squared minus 1 minus 2. So it's negative 3 over negative 2, which is positive 1.5. So when I plugged in negative 1, I should get a value of 1.5. So I know it's going to be going up on this side. And so again, I'm going to guess it snakes through here, but it, it could parabola in turn. I need to plug in positive a half just to confirm. So it's going to be 3 times a half over a half squared plus a half minus 2. And so the top is going to be 1.5 over the bottom, which is negative 1.25. So again, I don't know exactly what this number is. It doesn't really matter. A positive divided by a negative is a negative, so I know at one half, at 0.5, I'm going to do something that's <coughs> negative. Something down here, which again is enough to give me the shape of my graph, because I know it has to be negative. It's going to be something in that form. Okay, so it tells me to sketch the graph of f of x equals x squared minus 9 over x squared minus 2x minus 3. So again, factored form, we did that correctly. So this is x plus 3 times x minus 3 over x minus 3 times x plus 1. And then we had a common factor of x minus 3 that we could cancel out in the numerator and denominator. So when we found the holes... Okay, the holes were happening when x minus 3 equals 0, so when x was 3. So we plugged 3 into the new depressed polynomial, and we got a value of 6 over 4, which is 3 over 2, which is 1.5. So 3, 1.5 is the hole. All that part we did correctly. Next, find the vertical asymptote. That happens... When the denominator becomes 0, so we're going to set x plus 1 equal to 0. So that's x equals negative 1. Gives my vertical asymptote. Next, we're going to look at the horizontal asymptote. So we look back at the original. Because the degrees are equal, I have a horizontal asymptote at y equals a ratio of the coefficients. So that's 
horizontal asymptote at y equals 1. So all that part we did, we did correctly. Now the next part's where I messed up. So when I find my x-intercept, I have to use the new depressed polynomial. I can't go back to my original. So right here's my depressed polynomial, x plus 3 over x plus 1. So when I'm finding the x-intercepts, I want to know, well, I, or I do know that the y value is equal to 0, but I set the wrong thing equal to 0 last time. I did it to the original. I need to do it to the depressed polynomial. Now, when I solve this, that's going to give me x plus 3 equals 0, which means I have an x-intercept at negative 3. So again, that's the ordered pair, negative 3, 0. And then when I find the y-intercept, same thing. I need to use the depressed polynomial. So when I plug in 0 for x, I'm going to get 0 plus 3 over 0 plus 1 which is 3 over 1, which is 3. So my y-intercept is at 0, 3. And then lastly, we want to know, does it cross the horizontal asymptote? Which is y equals 1. So again, I have to plug this into the depressed polynomial. So you can't plug back to the original. You have to go to the depressed one which is x plus 3 over x plus 1. Now we solve over 1, cross multiply. So where does x plus 3 equal x plus 1? It doesn't. Because I get a statement that looks like 3 equals 1. That's nonsense. So no, it does not cross y equals 1. I'm going to take all this information and graph it. So this is the first time we're graphing one that has a hole. So... What I normally do is I graph the whole last because I want to get the rest of my graph shape correct. Well, actually, I don't have to anymore because I know where my hole is at. My hole is at 3, 1 and a half, so let's just go ahead and graph it now. So if I graph 3, 1 and a half, that means the hole is happening right here. So I'm going to put an open circle at 3, 1 and a half. Right now I have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 1. It's going to be here. And then I have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 1, which is here. I know I have an x-intercept at negative 3, 0, which is this point. And I know I have a y-intercept at 0, 3, which is this point. And I know it does not cross the horizontal asymptote. So how many sections does my graph have? I've divided it into two, right, because it's vertical asymptote. I've got two sections. Do I know where it's at on the left side? I do, because I've got this point. Do I know where it's at on the right side? I do, because I have these two points. So I can just go ahead and fill in the graphs towards the asymptotes everywhere else. So we're going to be up here. Oh, that approach more quickly than I thought it would. There we go. Better. So again, when you graph these, make sure you're making the graph smooth and curved. Don't make sharp points because that's not a function. Okay, and then same thing here. Through the y-intercept, through the hole, 10 towards the asymptotes. So I'm going to go ahead and start working this behind you guys. Um, you should have already factored. <coughs> difference of squares in the numerator. Denominator should be x minus 3 times x plus 2. Now I have a common factor of x plus 2, which means I have a hole there. So I have a hole at negative 2. When I plug in negative 2, that gives me negative 4 into the depressed polynomial. So plug in negative 2 here and here for x. That's my x over here. So that's going to be negative 5, or sorry, negative 4 over negative 5, which is 4 fifths. So negative 2, 0 0.8 should be my whole. Next thing I'm looking for, vertical asymptotes. 
So that's where the rest of the denominator becomes zero. So I have a vertical asymptote at x equals three. Horizontal asymptote at y equals one. Now when you're working these, make sure we're using the new depressed polynomial. So x-intercept, I'm gonna plug in zero for y. So I get zero equals x minus two over x minus three. When I solve this, that's going to give me x minus two equals zero. So x equals two is my x-intercept. So I have the point two zero. Next thing I have is my y-intercept. So I'm gonna plug in zero for x. So that's going to be negative two over negative three, which means my y-intercept is at two thirds positive and then lastly does it cross my horizontal asymptote which is at y equals 1 so I'm going to say 1 equals x minus 2 over x minus 3 put this over 1 cross multiply that tells me x minus 2 equals x minus 3 subtract x so I get negative two equals negative three, which is nonsense. So no, it doesn't cross y equals one. Then we should sketch these points. So again, I know I have a hole at negative two, 0 0.8, which is gonna be right there, open circle. Vertical asymptote is at x equals three. So dotted line here at x equals three. Horizontal asymptote at y equals one. Should be right here. So again, it's kind of hard for me doing this iPad, but make sure that hole is just beneath that horizontal asymptote. Um, okay, then I have x-intercept is at two, which is here. And I have a y-intercept that's at two-thirds, which will be somewhere right here. So I know what the graph does over here on the left side. It has to be beneath my horizontal asymptote through the hole, through the y-intercept, through the x-intercept, and then turning down like that. And now do I know what it does on the right side? Get two options, right? The graph could be down here, or it could be up here. Do you know which one it is? How do you know? No Correct. Because there are no other x-intercepts, it can't be on the bottom side, or you would have another x-intercept. So I know it has to be up here. Again, if you were unsure, what could you do? You could plug in a x value that happens over there, right? You could plug in 5. What happens if you plug in 5 here? 5 minus 2 is 3 over 5 minus 3 is 2. So you get 3 over 2, which is at 1.5. When you plug in 5, you should be at 1.5, which is here, which again would be above. So you get multiple ways you can do that. Sketch the graph of x squared minus x minus 2 over x minus 1. So we're going to begin just like we have everything else. Factored form. Can I factor the numerator? Yes. yes. What does it factor to be? x minus 2 times x plus 1. And that would be over x minus 1. So do I have any common factors that I can cancel? Numerator and denominator. I do not. So holes, there are none. Next, vertical asymptotes. There would be one at x equals one, right? Set the denominator equal to zero and solve. Now horizontal asymptote. Well, the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator, which means I don't have a horizontal asymptote 
But what I do have is an oblique asymptote or a slant asymptote. So in order to find this oblique asymptote, we have to do long division. Okay, so we're going to take our original e equation here. What is this? It's a rational function that tells me to divide. So divide. That's what we're going to do. So I've got inside my box what's in the numerator, x squared minus x minus 2, and that's divided by x minus 1. Okay? Now, when we do the long division, I've got x. I want it to be x squared. What do I need to multiply by? x. x times x is x squared. x times negative 1 is negative x. Then what do we do? We change the signs. We subtract these. x squared minus x cancels. Negative x plus x cancels. We bring down the negative 2. Can x become negative 2? Nope. No. So this is my remainder. For the purposes of what we're doing here, the remainder doesn't matter. So what was I left with? I was left with x. That means I have an oblique asymptote at y equals x. What is y equals x? That is a line with a y-intercept of 0 and a slope of 1. Right? Think about y equals mx plus b form. That's what this is in. So now my slant asymptote is going to be that line there, y equals x. Any questions? It's the only thing different before we graph it. Now, let's go ahead. Find the x-intercepts. Where do the x-intercepts happen? When y is 0. So I've got 0 equals x minus 2 times x plus 1 over x minus 1. Cross multiply. That's going to tell me 0 equals x minus 2 times x plus 1. So two things multiply to be 0, so solve each one. So we get x equals 2 and x equals negative 1. So my x-intercepts are at 2, 0, and negative 1, 0. Okay. Next thing I need to look for, y-intercepts. Y-intercepts happen when x is 0. So this would be 0, 0, 0. So that's negative 2 over negative 1, which is just 2. So my y-intercept is at 2. So I can write that as 0, 2. And then lastly, we want to know, does it cross? We normally check the horizontal asymptote. Well, this time it's going to be the oblique asymptote, y equals x. Does it cross the line y equals x? So what is my y value equal to? x. So we plug x in. That tells me x equals, and I'm going to write the factored form, x minus 2 times x plus 1 over x minus 1. Mm. Okay, maybe I shouldn't have wrote the factor form. Cross multiply. So that's going to be x squared minus x equals, and then right here, it would be 1 times this. So we would just be left with this, but I'm going to go ahead and distribute it back out. I, I did the wrong thing. So if I distribute that out, that's going to give me x squared minus x minus 2. Now then, get all our x's on the same side. So we can subtract by x squared on both sides. Those cancel. We can add x on both sides. Those cancel, which tells me 0 equals negative 2, which is nonsense. So does it cross? No, it doesn't. Okay, now let's graph. So let's make this smaller because I might need to see that later. Okay. So now I have a hole. No, I don't. I have a vertical asymptote at x equals 1. I have a oblique asymptote at y equals x. So again, that means I have a y-intercept of 0 and a slope of 1. So that line goes through the grid like so. 
All right, so I'm plotting all those points. So I'm just going to leave it like that. That is my oblique asymptote. You can make them dashed lines. I'm going to have a hard time dashing between these points. So I'm just leaving it at the points that I found from the slope. So now, how many pieces is my graph in? Still two. Right, the vertical asymptote divides it into two. So I have what's happening on the left side and the right side. Let's keep going. What do, else do I know? I know I have x-intercepts at two, which is here, and at negative one, which is here. I know I have a y-intercept at two, which is here. So now think about before. We had to choose. Were we above the horizontal asymptote or below the horizontal asymptote? Well, now then we've got this oblique asymptote. So I'm going to choose, am I above the oblique asymptote or beneath the oblique asymptote? I'm above it over here, right, because I have to go through these points. So I'm tending towards the oblique asymptote. Then I turn up, go through these points, and i got a vertical asymptote right here on that side. Okay, so the left side, we have that taken care of. Graph looks like that. And then on the right side, same thing. I'm going to have to decide. Am I above the oblique asymptote like this? Or am I beneath the oblique asymptote? I have to be beneath it, right? Because I have to go through that x-intercept. So again, I'm tending towards the vertical asymptote. Go through here. And then once I get to the oblique asymptote, I follow it. It looks like that. Okay, so when I worked it all out, uh, well, I covered that up, and now it's tied together. Holes were none, vertical asymptote x equals zero, no horizontal asymptote, but there was a slant asymptote. When I do my long division, I get 3x. Is everybody good with that? So y equals 3x is the equation of my oblique or my slant asymptote. 
when I found my x-intercepts, I'm going to get 3x squared equals negative 1. I divide by 3. Then I'm going to take the square root of a negative number, which is going to give me an imaginary root, which means there are no x-intercepts. I can't graph an imaginary root, so we're just going to say there are no x-intercepts. Then y intercept, if I plug in 0 for x, what happens? I get divide by 0 error, which means there are no y intercepts. And then when I check, did it cross my slant asymptote? The three x squares canceled, and I covered that up. Sorry. So that means I got zero equals one as my statement, which again was nonsense. So it does not cross this asymptote. Now I've graphed the two asymptotes. I've got my vertical asymptote and my slant asymptote. So again, I've got really two options. The graph could go above. The slant asymptote here, or it could go beneath the slant asymptote. I know it has to be underneath it, because if it was above it, it would have an x-intercept. It does not exist. So that means I'm towards the slant asymptote, then I'm going to make a sharp turn and go down here. One thing I want you to be careful of, make sure you still draw a function. Don't come all the way up in here and then make a straight line back down, right? Because you're making a sharp turn, you're probably not going to make it a function. So it is a rounded graph. So it does not have to come all the way up. It may not even get close to that. And so we'll graph it here in a second see what it looks like. But I just know it's going to be somewhere beneath that slant asymptote. <coughs> and then over here, I've got the same thing. I can either be beneath the slant asymptote, like that, or I could be above the slant asymptote, like this. Well, again, because there are no x-intercepts, I know that this one cannot be it, so that means this has to be my graph. Got two parabola looking things right on its end. Let's graph it to see exactly what it looks like.